Hey, welcome to Class Act Media. I'm Jack. He's Elliot. And <laughs> welcome back to Nothing Matters, the show where two white guys with beards talk about a weird movie they just watched because no one's done that before. And tonight, we watched a movie that, uh, I think probably one of the most high-profile movies we've watched so far on Nothing Matters, Loquisha, which, uh, the trailer came out a while ago, and, uh, I think I might be a black woman trapped in a white man's body. It confused many, including us, and uh, we decided to watch that as our, to cap our, our, our night of watching movies off. Now, for those who don't know, Loquisha is a film about a man who wants to <laughs> become a talk radio host, but he can't get the job. So he decides to pose as a black woman named Loquisha, and everyone loves it. Would you like to start us off, Elliot? I struggle to find the words to properly explain how upsetting and disturbing it is that this film was even allowed to be made, that... Not just one person, our director, writer, lead actor, thought this was okay, a good idea, an acceptable product. But more other people signed off on this. Prime took it on as, as an original movie. I have not seen something so... It's a hard movie to describe. Just so blatantly wrong. So, I think it is important to note that, as you as you said, uh, the movie was written, directed, and stars a man named Jeremy Seville. Jeremy Seville. Our new worst enemy. I think the most <sighs> self... This is... Okay. Outside of a Neil Breen movie, this yes. may be the most self-congratulatory movie. Neil ever. Breen vibes if Neil Breen wanted to try to make commentary about race. Very like, bad at it. This entire movie revolves around our lead character patting himself on the back, often using other characters to do so. Yeah. He's, he is the perfect man. He's, he's a genius. Everything he says is the perfect thing. Everyone he knows showers praise on him constantly. Like, and, and, and for some characters, such as his African-American love interest, every time he opens his mouth to speak... She acts as though he has just said the most <laughs> incredible, grandiose piece yeah. of wisdom she's ever heard. The first time we see her, she's walking into his bar, because he's a bartender. She's walking in there, she's angry, she's like, oh, I hate men, I have a, I got a problem with my boyfriend, I hate men, you're all the worst, you're all the same. And he's like, N he's, I forget what he says, but it was the smartest thing anyone's ever said because like she comes back the very next day and she's like your brilliant words made me realize what was wrong not only does she life. come back she says it then and uh, yeah, then comes true. back and says it again and gives him flowers for have if you've ever seen that really like cringe worthy clip that's constantly going around twitter and instagram and whatever else um it's like it's a guy sitting on a stage and somebody says something about America being the greatest country in the world and he's like, is it because, and then he just starts rattling off statistics in a really ranty and soapboxy way and everyone in the audience is like, <sighs> that's this, but for an entire movie and even less educated about the topics this person is trying to discuss. Yes. It's, it's, like, he's... The, the moral of the movie is supposed... It, see, it's difficult to tell. The moral of the movie is that the main character is a genius and he's yeah. perfect. But the moral of the movie is supposed to be 
that you, you shouldn't think about where a message is coming from. You should just think about the message, which on its surface That's not isn't a... necessarily a bad message. But the way it chooses <laughs> to convey this message is essentially by saying you should never consider any factors about a person and any person's opinion on any issue should hold equal weight to anyone else's regardless of whether or not they have shared experiences. If one person has actually experienced something, it's, it's very, and I hate to use this term, but it's very mansplaining and white splaining <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like even if you are the type of person who disagrees with terminology like that. Yeah, I am. And I, I, I would consider myself one of those people, but I still see where you're coming even, from. Even if you are, like, you can't deny it here. Because my God, is it just so centered on the main character's... On the main character not only being right about everything, but being right about everything to the point where everyone praises him and acts like he's a God. Yeah, it's it's fan fiction just for this guy's own life. It's <laughs> oh, and the other mes- the other message of the movie, right, is that you should be honest with people. But I swear to God, the movie does not extend this message to the main character. Like yeah. it partially does, and then it stops. Other characters are criticized for being dishonest. But when, when Joe finally reveals the truth that he is Loquisha, they run a poll on whether on, on Facebook or whatever, which sidebar, this movie does not understand social media. Yeah, it'll it, show it was tweets. written by a boomer. Yeah, it'll show tweets and it'll be like via Loquisha, like instead of a retweet. Like it just doesn't get it at all. Yeah. Disregarding that. There, there's a Facebook poll. Um, and the options are after Joe reveals he's Laquisha on air, the options are he leaves, retires, whatever. <coughs> he keeps doing the show as Laquisha, or he does the Joe show instead as himself. Yeah. And the Joe and Laquisha options tie, yeah. so he does both. So at the end of the show, he has learned, like, he's still doing the voice. Well, he's still essentially performing in blackface. Part of the story was that Loquisha was like slowly becoming another entity as part of yeah. himself. There was like a like a um, schizophrenia thing going on. It was bizarre. There was like the really weird scene where he's having like our character is having the only struggle that he has in the entire movie, which is his struggle between being Joe and being Loquisha, and the only person that can talk him out of that struggle is himself because he's the smartest person around. <laughs> so there's a scene where Loquisha yeah. talks to Joe about Joe's problem. <laughs> I will say going into this movie and watching the first five minutes of this movie, it seemed like the entire movie would be very much engulfed by very like right wing social narratives where the whole movie would be about like, you, sh- you know, PC culture is dumb, like, blah, blah, blah. Surprisingly, that all, like, the movie did not get political in places I thought it would. Yeah. Like, it's clear that this wasn't made with a political agenda in mind. This was made with a, I am the greatest person in the world agenda in mind. And the everyone fact, needs to know about the fact that this wasn't made with a political agenda. I don't know if it makes it better or worse. Like on the better side, this movie is not trying to manipulate a bunch of people to believe in a set of politics okay. in um, a very preachy way. But on the worst side, it has nothing to say. That means <laughs> he genuinely just like thinks this is a neutral, valuable message that should be accepted. It's just, it's a very ignorant movie. Yeah. Uh, And I think the worst aspect, should we talk about the scene where he talks a suicidal girl off? Oh my god. Okay, Jack can attest to this. I was like this. Yeah, your jaw was dropped the entire... The whole... Okay. Let's walk you through this scene. He's on air, right? Yes. As Loquisha. As he's going to a commercial, 
his manager who screens his calls, who, by the way, is black. He, he gave himself a black best friend who's totally cool with this. <laughs> oh, yeah. He totally... Yeah, we can... But... <laughs> um, so he gets the call, right? And just casually, the manager's like, yeah, we have a call from, like, somebody on a bridge. Um, you might want to think about jumping. Like, think you can talk to him down? He's like, yeah, I think I got this. I like, as if it's not a big deal. Are you sure? I'll, I, I got and like then after five the commercial, minutes. he takes it. And he's like, yeah, you should just jump. And she's like, what? I thought you were going to, like, care about me and try to stop me. Well, clearly you don't even care about yourself. Like, the worst yeah. things. Like, going you, through the checklist of everything you should not everything say. Everything you should have. This, is, this is, like, 13 reasons why writers were given the phone in a suicide <laughs> hotline. Like, just blatant stupidity. The fact... And, and again, like... To me, this was not as offensive as 13 Reasons Why, and, and it's kin. Because 13 Reasons Why was made by real professionals. Yeah. They went through dozens of executives and blah, 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 and they were all just like, yeah, this is fine. They knew better, but they did it anyway. It's for clicks, for whatever, you know? Um... This dude just has yeah. no idea what is right or what is wrong. He so thought on that it was end, being profound. On, on that end, I, I, at the very least, I don't want to say this guy is a bad person. He's intentionally spreading ignorance. I just think he honestly believes this stuff. I think he has, I don't want anyone to give me a second opinion syndrome. Clearly, he thinks his word is God because he's written this whole movie around it. I think he's just clueless. But he's going, he's talking to this woman... And he gets her to, like, fly to Paris instead of jumping, but, like, all in the but most he, condescending way possible. And he tells her, when you get to Paris, jump off the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, yeah, That's, and it's like a, but it's, 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 it's all coming from a place of, like, clearly you don't respect yourself if you're committing suicide. How could you throw away this gift? Like, yes, the best way to get a potential suicide victim, someone considering suicide, to not... God, you're gonna get demonetized for this. <laughs> I don't. I. I mean, I Doesn't can't matter. monetize myself anymore. That is very. I need a thousand good. subscribers. To good old YouTube. Um, but the worst thing to say to a suicidal person is something that makes them feel guilty or bad about themselves. That is like the most common sense, obvious thing. Why? Why? Why would you think making someone who feels bad enough about their life that they're considering suicide? should feel worse about it and that that would help. Yeah, is And again, exactly. I can only fault him so much because I genuinely think he's just clueless. He, this is not a man who... And yes, it's because he's arrogant, it's because he's ignorant, whatever. I don't think it's as evil as just being like, we should make a really clickbaity suicide thing and yeah, then people will watch our show. He thought he I was really saying something profound. He thought he was doing, he was saying something smart and good and sending a good message out there. He believed he was doing good, but he also wasn't. <laughs> la, 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 to anyone else. Yeah. Um, let's see. I want, there's some other things I want to talk about. Like, you could enter a college residence hall and you could put cameras in all the bathrooms <laughs> and you would start. not see someone jerking themselves <laughs> off this much. Like, My God, he loves himself. He's it's, so, he's so selfless that the re even the reason he becomes Loquisha in the first place isn't just because he wants a radio show. Like that would be a fine motivation, but no, he's so perfect and so selfless. He didn't even want to be on the radio in the first place. But his black female but friend convinced him. His to. black female friend convinced him to, and also he his really son needs to get into the smart kids school. Yeah, that costs it's this a lot of money plot that really doesn't and. But matter. It, it's just so that he can have a selfless reason to be. But yeah, at, at first, the movie's all like, oh man, if I was a minority, people would listen to me. I'm a white man. Blah. And I'm like, okay, here we go into like poor me, white man territory. But then that, that just stops. So like the political <laughs> message isn't there. It's literally just, I'm so great. How could anyone not see that? And like this Both. guy really loves his writing because scenes will go on forever. Like, I'll, a scene will go on, the dialogue will be said, I'll say, I understand the point of this scene now, but it just keeps going. Oh, yeah. And they don't say anything new, they just keep adding on to the point they have already made, yeah. not saying anything else interesting, just keep saying the same yeah. thing, uh, just, 
I'm, uh, pretty much every it's, scene it's I was saying, move on. There. This doesn't have the same problem as other films we've watched for this. Um, like, for example, <laughs> Tiptoes. Tiptoes. Where there are scenes that just could have been cut out because you don't learn anything new. Like, yeah. there aren't necessarily scenes that could have been cut out. Just I mean, everything should have like, been cut out. It shouldn't exist. But if we're pretending it should, there aren't scenes that should have been cut out. But, like, almost every scene was two or three times longer than it should yeah. have been. Just because he was, he loved, he thought he thought his dialogue was so clever. And he thought he was so funny. I feel like there was also a 50-50 on like maybe half the shots looked like at the very least professional, acceptable, yeah. the lighting was fine. The, and then the other half were like extremely bland, straight camera angles, like something you would find on like a, a 2007 YouTube sketch. Yeah. But it's a movie. And, like, speaking of the unprofessional cinematography, the unprofessional audio editing, where they just, like, there's one scene where he's talking about his, his new smartphone. Well, by the way, there's, a, like, a very ham-fisted boomer message yeah, about phone bad. bad. Uh, <laughs> that was good sing. <laughs> bad. Can't do that. But, no phones. I know. Um, that smartphone is yeah. making you dumb. Real line from the movie, from the kid to the... Dad, that smartphone is making you stupid. Oh, I want to talk is... about the ADR. Yeah, we will. But the best line ever, the best line at my favorite part of the movie, right? Okay, so we haven't mentioned this yet, but they hire... So the whole time, they've tricked even the radio station. They don't know Loquish is a white guy. Eventually, Loquish is getting popular enough because, like, literally everyone who hears Joe becomes in love with him because he is our Lord and Savior. He knows everything. Um... They, they hire, like, an, an actress to play Loquisha for live events and stuff. So, at, at one point, she basically decides to flip it on him and say, look, I'll reveal you, um, you know, unless you give me, like, 70% of the profits from everything, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he says, you're, you're blackmailing me? And she goes, <laughs> no, I'm black femaling you. Are you blackmailing me? No, I'm black femaling you. Oh! That's some good comedy. The most comedy. painful line in the movie. Some quality we comedy. Both. That was a good pun. You screamed. I did scream. <laughs> I wish I had a video of that. I know. That we should have filmed live because, I mean, there were things in this movie I was not expecting. Yeah. I'll tell you what. You're, you're, you're not going to get this experience anywhere else. This is a one-of-a-kind movie. I this is Neil Breen with better production value. Better. A little more self-awareness, but talking about much more... I don't want to say much more complex topics, but topics he knows even less about. Like, yeah. Neil, Neil Breen can make a movie and be like, violence is bad. <laughs> and like, even though he doesn't, he's not going into anything complex. Or he's even though space he's, like, Jesus. Yeah, you're right. Violence is bad. This is less cut and dry. And, and um, we're just, it's not a very good conversation about it. And I, <laughs> I want, I want to talk about the ADR because like, it's only in one scene. There were, there were a couple other little moments. But the only one well, where it was that? this noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's one scene where he's talking to his boss at the bar, who, by the way, we only see in, like, one scene. And she shows up at, like, yeah, the very end. he works at the bar, too, during the day. That's where he He may as well be the owner of the bar. Like, this, the woman who owns the bar has no bearing on the rest of the this story. This bar only exists in the movie for people to walk in, get advice from him, and tell him how amazing he is. Yeah. But like, Most places in the movie only exist. He, he gets his smartphone, not his iPhone. It's very important that you don't know about. Hmm. Because like he, he's getting it, and she's like, you don't normally have one of those. But in the scene where they're talking about they're clearly saying iPhone. Yeah. But for some reason, I guess he decided that he couldn't he say a brand, brand name. Because I don't think that's illegal. Like, that's fair use, I think. Yeah, you can just I'm say not sure a, what the technical... All, all I know is it's some of the worst... First, yeah, it's. Wanted to see you're working so hard, Joe. I got a smartphone. But you said you hated smartphones. I was wrong. It, just, it was. We had to rewind it like three times because, like, totally. that wasn't real. Like, yeah. We were like, we just misheard like, that. <laughs> yes, I just got this brand new smartphone. Like, did not flow at all. The lips were off. The background noise was different. Just it was awful. baffle. Like. Like, I, I swear to God, the audio was peaking during the stuff where they were. Yeah, it, it was just weird. And again, there were scenes where this looked like a real movie. 
And then there were scenes where this looked like a college like project joke. by C plus students. Do we have anything else to say about Loki? I, I'm tired. I'm t- it's like the middle of the night. No, I'm just tired because of this. Because of Loquisha. Loquisha we've watched made th- me tired. We've watched three movies and it's almost midnight and Loquisha has broken us. Yeah. On the on the scale, I I, I would put Loquisha firmly in the funny territory, but yes. also in the like you will also be probably be angry at points that this exists. I kind of at the have, very least the bridge scene. You might yeah. be mad this movie exists, and no one could fault you for that except in, for Joe. But in and, our, and Joe knows everything, so maybe he's right. In our ranking list, does this go above or below Millionaire Dog? Oh, I this isn't as good as Millionaire Dog. It's not as good. I don't know. I feel like I might want to watch this again over Millionaire Dog. Maybe if only to analyze deeper into Joe's psyche. Wait, not 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 Joe. I I want to dig into Jeremy Seville. Yes, psyche. Jeremy Seville. I keep forgetting his name. Joe. He doesn't have a Wikipedia page. He has a letterbox. He he He's has two movies. He has He's written, directed, and starred in another movie, which we might visit later on. Just, Is there any good movie where the writer, director, and lead actor are all the same person? I mean, there has to be one. Did Orson Welles write Citizen Kane? Yeah, yeah, he co-wrote it. Yeah, Jesus Christ, like so, the best movie ever. <laughs> we got Citizen oh, Kane, Citizen Lo Kane, Quisha. Lo Quisha. <laughs> the Room. Eh, the, the Room is less competent, but less embarrassing that it exists. Like... You want to go to... You might go, ironically, to a showing of The Room. You don't want to go, ironically, to a showing of Loquisha. Because you, don't want, to, you don't want to... I would not want to show my face there. And be like, yeah, I'm supporting this financially. That's, my, that's how I feel about Joker. I know. <laughs> Jack is not happy I got a Joker. whole movie about... Well, that's a whole other thing. I got a whole video on He hasn't seen it yet. I, and I still... I already have my thesis about the movie written now. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Uh, I think when we're starting to get distracted by other movies, it's time to wrap up talking about this one. That happened real quick with uh, with, uh, with tip-toes. tiptoes. God, what a bad movie. Anyway, Ugh. this has been Nothing Matters. I'll see you next time, guys. If I was a black woman. I'd be perfect. <laughs> She's brilliant. I know. Get her in here. The quick gonna be the biggest thing in radio. But I still need my anonymity.